worship you, our Lord and our God, for there is no other God besides you. You are highly exalted, the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings. We honor you today for who you are, for what you have made us, dear God. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for yet an opportunity to hear from you, dear God. Lord, we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Our prayer, dear God, is that you will open our ears to hear what you want to tell us today. Lord, I surrender to your leadership that, God, you're going to use me to speak what you want each one of us to hear, to the honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord once again. I am honored this morning that the Lord has found me worthy to share his word with us this morning. I want to thank God for this opportunity and to thank our canon in absentia for giving me this opportunity to share what the Lord has put in my heart. For the visitors, my name is Susan Wamboi Kehanya, and by the grace of God, I am born again. I want to share with us from the readings that were brought to us. And um, it is interesting how the spirit works and speaks to us through the different things that happen here during the service. Everything that we have done this morning have touched on my message today, beginning with the procession song, all the readings from Veronica, from Betty, and what I am going to do now is just to highlight some of those things. From our Psalm reading, Psalm 129, verse 1 says, They have greatly oppressed me. And verse 2, the last part there, says, But they have not gained victory over me. And so today, I want to talk about that, that they have greatly oppressed me, but they will not gain victory over me. Praise the Lord. They have greatly oppressed you, but they will not They have greatly oppressed me, but they will not gain victory over me. I looked for the meaning of the word oppressed, and uh, for the purposes of my sermon today, 
I want to give my meaning. To be oppressed is to be heavily burdened, either mentally or physically or spiritually by troubles, advanced conditions, or anxiety. And as I give my description, I don't know whether I am the only one who is oppressed. I don't know whether I am the only one who is carrying burdened, burdens. But if I am the only one, then I am going to preach to myself today. And um, our Old Testament reading, the one from Isaiah, the first verse that we read today talked about a tongue that sustains the weary. And I also wanted to find out who is a weary person. And I realized a weary person is a tired person. You know the way we say, mi mi ni mecho, mi ni mechoka. You try and try, you give your best. Unafika mahali unasema, mi mi ni mechoka. And uh, for us to get there, ni kusema kuna mzigo tumekua tumebeba, sindio? We get tired because we have been doing something or we have been carrying something. Therefore today, kama umechoka, if you are weary, maybe you are weary of a relationship, probably with a spouse, with a friend, with a child, with a colleague, or even with a neighbor. Probably you are weary or you feel oppressed by your job. But for all of us, to mechoka with our country. Isn't it? But I said they have greatly oppressed us, but they will not gain victory over us. Why? Because of our theme. We continue to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Our reading from Isaiah, at this time, Isaiah was prophesying about the suffering Messiah. He talked about how the Messiah would suffer. And because we are followers of this Messiah, we also get to suffer. In this life, we face situations that oppress us. And from this reading, I realized whatever is oppressing me will not overcome me. Why? Because Isaiah began in verse 4 and said, 
the sovereign Lord has given me a well instructed tongue. And when I was thinking about Jesus and how he used his tongue, he was deeply oppressed as he went for the 40 days fasting in the desert in Matthew chapter 4, and he overcame the temptations through the scripture. And I have realized that me and you need to be good students of scripture so that our tongue will be well instructed to give refreshment to a weary soul. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible reminds us that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness. And the uh, instruction is training, isn't it? So a well-instructed tongue is a trained tongue. How do you use your tongue? How do I use my tongue? In that situation that is oppressing me, how do I use my tongue? Proverbs 18.21 reminds us that the tongue has the power of life and death. Do I use my tongue in oppression to give life, to bring life? Or do I use my tongue to bring death? As women, we are known to speak a lot, isn't it? And um, if you are a follower of the internet, these days kuna kitu nasikia watu wanasema inaitwa toxi toxicity. Depending on where the river that I drank water from. And um, as a parent, it saddens me to see the confessions that our children make. And they say, my mom is, they say, my mom is, my mom is toxic. And uh, after following just a bit, I realize that our toxicity is from what we have been telling our children. I had an experience of one of our daughters in this church who tells me she would have committed suicide if it was not for her child because her mother is toxic. Her mother does not support her and her mother is always putting her down. And when I listened to what she was talking about, I saw myself in the mother.
I don't know what to say. Because exactly the things she was describing that her mother does for her, that was me. And what we say to our children, sometimes and always, there is no parent who wouldn't want the best for their children. Sindio. So the things we say and the things we do for our children, we do because we want the best for them. But times have changed, and now we have turned, and we have become toxic, an instructed tongue. How are you using your tongue? Kuna ingine squeeze wanasema? Hapa ni wapi? Sindio? Because the things that they were told when they were growing up are things to discourage them. Or they were told, awatafika wapi? Hapo. And now that they are there, wanauliza? Hapa? Ni wapi? Anyway, an instructed tongue. An instructed tongue speaks only what God says and believes in what God says. May the Lord forgive me and may the Lord forgive you because many a times we have spoken carelessly. If you have not, in fact, James says that the tongue is a small organ. And if you are able to control your tongue, then you are perfect. But if you are like me who talks a lot, you find sometimes you have been careless. And I think some of the oppression that we are going through is because we do not have an instructed tongue. And my prayer is that the Lord helps us to have an instructed tongue. Isaiah continues and says that day by day he wakens me morning by morning and wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. And I will take that together with verse 5, that the Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. And for the oppression that we are going through, not to overcome us, we have to choose the environment that we need to be in. Our in environment determines what we hear, isn't it, and what we see. But Isaiah says, the Lord opens my ear to hear like one being instructed. What are we exposing our hearing to? And even when we are in that environment, because we are not able to control what people say to us, we cannot control the sounds that come to us, isn't it? Neither can we control what we see. 
because that is the environment that we are in. And I thought about the environment of our heart. Because we do not live by sight. We live by faith. We can see many things, but we can choose how to react to those things. We can hear many things, but we can choose how to, to react to them. And I am reminded of Philippians 4.8, a scripture that I love a lot, that finally, after we have seen all those things, and after we have had all those things, what should we think about? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, is lovely, is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, this is what we should think about. Our visitor told us that we have been called for such a time as this. That despite the environment that we are in, we refuse to live by sight and choose to live by faith. And only then, when we live by faith, only then we overcome the oppression that we are going through. And we need to be deliberate, not to be moved by what we see. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So as I said, we need to be students of the word of God. So that when we see those things and we hear those things, we immediately switch from the physical to the faith to the confession of our tongue, to confess what the word of God tells us. And I realized also that I can only overcome oppression through humility. I saw in verse 6, that this suffering Messiah offered his back and his cheeks. And you can imagine they were pulling his beard. Isn't it how painful it can be? And sometimes, the things that oppress us, oppress us so much that we are in great pain. But the example that Jesus gives us is an example of humility. Praise the Lord. We need to forget who we are and know who is in charge. God is always in charge. And James chapter 4 and verse 10 reminds us to humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift us up. You know when you are oppressed, you are down, isn't it? 
And so when we humble ourselves before the Lord, knowing that he's the one who is in charge in that situation and not the oppression that we are going through, then he will lift us up. And in verse 9, verse 9 and 7, we can only overcome oppression when we know that we have a helper. Praise the Lord. And our helper is the Lord. And the word of God says, it is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Helps is continuous. He will not help us once, but he will continue helping us all the time. Psalm 121 reminds us that our help will come from the Lord. Verse 7 and verse 9 tells us, when we make the Lord our help, we will not be disgraced. Praise the Lord. Neither will we be ashamed. In verse 8, we need to be forgiving. Wacha tu sibebe watu. Ata sai, there are people who feel offended. Sai, tu tukiwa tu hapa. Kuna mtu anasikia wako offended, the way the sermon has gone, the way the service has been, vile service imepangwa leo, vile the men are not here. Kuna mtu anasikia, ako? Yani, you look for anything to offend you. We need to be forgiving. Veronica told us to achan in a bitterness. Kuna mtu sasa nilikosea kitambo, ananiona hapa, anashindu, and sasa, na uyu anatoambia nini. Tuache kubeba mizi. We unabeba mtu na mtu ajui. Ata alisa hau. You know women we are known for keeping a record of wrongs. Tuache kubeba mizigo. Tueke mizigo ili tueze kuenda safari ya wokovu. Why? Why do we forgive? Because we have already been forgiven. You can imagine if God would keep a record of our wrongs. And that is the scripture that Betty read for us when we were beginning the service. If God would keep a record of our wrongs, who would, who would survive? So the same way that God has extended his grace and forgiven us, we also extend the same grace and forgive others. Also for us to over, over, of, overcome oppression, we need to fear the Lord. When we fear the Lord, we do what God wants us to do. Isn't it? And then we are able to live in wisdom. Proverbs 1 7 reminds us the beginning of wisdom is is the fear of the Lord can you imagine you are foolish if you don't fear the Lord because if wisdom is fearing the Lord then foolishness is eh? is not fearing the Lord. And in our collect for today, something, I, I, something caught my attention that we need to work out our salvation with 
fear and trembling. May the Lord give us wisdom to help us fear him and hate those things that God hates and love those things that God loves. The last thing is obedience. Obedience to the word, obedience to the law of the land. We said we will trust. We sang as we came and we said we are going to trust and obey. When we will trust and we obey the Lord, then we overcome oppression. And we cannot do these things if we do not have a relationship with God. Verse 4 said, The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue. We need to have a relationship with God so that he will be able to help us have victory over those things that are oppressing us. And I want to invite us for all the things that I have talked about I have talked about the tongue. I have talked about the environment. I have talked about the mind. I have talked about humility. I have talked about the Lord being our help. I have talked about forgiving, the fear of the Lord, and obedience. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And today, we said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. My prayer is that as we leave this service today, we leave this service as new people with a new resolve. I want us to take just a minute, think about those things. If you have been able to do all those things, thank God, because it is the grace of God that has enabled you if you feel that you have failed in each of those areas, we ask the Lord to forgive us and to give us new strength so that as we leave this service, we live as new people with new ways of living so that we will be able to overcome those things that have been oppressing us. Let us just take a minute, think about your life, see where you are, if there is anything that you want God to help you, Our Father and our God, your word never returns to you without accomplishing the purpose 
for which you have sent it. God, I have said what you wanted me to say, and Lord, you know us. We cannot hide anything from you. You know where we have failed, and you know where we are doing well. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the things that we do well, because it is by your grace and by your strength and by your will and power that we have been able to do those things. And Lord, you know where we have failed you. You know where we have failed our loved ones. You know where we have failed this country. You know where we have failed your church and even others. God, we can't do it without you. We combine our prayer today. You know each soul that is represented here. And you know the desire of each one of us. And you know, Lord, what we need to do. We surrender to you. That God, you're going to help us in the areas that we feel oppressed, be it in our families, be it in our finances, be it in our bodies, be it in our workplace, or wherever, Lord, your people feel they are weary and they can't do it anymore. Holy Spirit of God, come. Come and take your place in our lives. Come and do only that which you can do. So that moving forward, we will have a testimony of what you have done for us. We ask that you shall bless each one of us and that God, you will transform us to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oppression, Imeisha, in Jesus' name. From that instructed tongue, which has been instructed by the word of God. Oppression, Imeisha, in Jesus' name. Let's continue worshiping by singing hymn number 150. 